glad in it. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We're not in the house, but we're at the place of worship. So we want to welcome you, Damascus, uh, here this morning and to our Facebook family. Thank you for joining us and tuning us in this morning. We just pray that God would bless our time together. So let us go to him and worship and praise because he's worthy to be worshiped and he's worthy to be praised. So let us stand to our feet, clap our hands, lift our voices, amen, give amen, God the amen. praise that's due him. Amen. I don't know what you come to do. I come to praise the Lord. We've had some challenging mornings, but God is still good and we're going to praise him because he is worthy. I don't know what you come to do, but I come to praise the Lord. So everybody join in and help us. his name. That's what we come to do. Let us bow as Dick and Terry take us to the throne. Good morning, the Master. Good morning. Good morning. Dear God and Father, we come, Lord, in the precious name of Jesus to say thank you for your grace and your mercy. For this day and this opportunity, to worship, praise, and glorify your name. Oh, yes, Lord. Father, we come to lift up the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes. We come to let you know how grateful we are yes, for this yes. day and this opportunity to be back in the worship service again. Oh, yes. yes. Father, we had a long pandemic, yes. but your word kept coming forth. Oh, yes. 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 The shepherd you planted before us kept sowing the seed. We didn't miss a beat, Lord. We just kept worshiping and glorifying you. And now we are gathered together. And we come as one body to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. You've been so good to us, Lord. Oh, yeah. Down through the years you brought us, you kept us, and you never left us. You let us lean on your word. And your word you said we'll never come back for it. Amen. Amen. Everything you promised, we've got. Amen. And you promised us that we would hold on to your unchanging hand. Oh, yes. yes. There will be a great day coming. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Lord, when we can rejoice one with another Amen. in your kingdom. Yes. And we stop this morning to say thank you, Jesus. Thank, thank you. Thank you for an opportunity 
just to gather together again. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for the shepherd that you planted over this flock. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for the flock. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Lord, you yeah. said a bunch of good people here at this community. Yes. Yeah. 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 Lord, you blessed us in this church yeah. beyond measure. Yeah. And we didn't come for form or fashion. Neither we come for an outside show. Yes. We just come to lift up the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. Yes. And Father, as we continue on in this service, yes. we ask you to touch our minds and our hearts. Yes. Oh, yes. Lord, let us be grateful for the opportunity that you've given us. Yes. Lord, let us be able to lean on your word as you tell us to. Because yes. one yes. day when the warfare of life is over, when all has been said and done, yeah. you promised that we have a place in your kingdom. Oh, yeah. And Lord, we're looking forward to that day. Yeah. That when we can stand before the judgment yeah. seat of Christ. And he said, well done, my yeah. son. Yeah. Yeah. Good and faithful. You've been faithful over a few things. Come on in. Yeah. I'll make you ruler over many. Yeah. Father, these and all blessings we ask in the precious name of Jesus. Christ's sakes, amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise yeah. Him. Let us now open our Bibles to the book of Daniel, chapter 9. Daniel, chapter 9. And you will find these words beginning in that first verse. It was the first year of the reign of Darius the Mede, the son of Ahasuerus, who became king of the Babylonians. During the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, learned from reading the word of the Lord yeah. as revealed to Jeremiah the prophet that Jerusalem must lie desolate for 70 years. Yeah. Verse number three. So I turned to the Lord and pleaded with him in prayer and fasting. Yeah, yeah. We want to stop right there. We're going to stop there. We're going to talk from the subject. Prayer that gets God's attention. Yeah. Prayer that gets God's attention. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to gather again yeah. as your people. We thank you, Father, for your word, for your love, for your grace, for your mercy. Yeah. For all that you provide us. As we come now, we ask that you open our hearts, our minds, our ears, that we can hear and know yeah, what, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. and learn and gain and glean what we should from this time that we've gathered. Mm -hmm. May this word touch hearts, challenge souls everywhere. Yes. Uh, we thank you that you'll do those things for us. Yes, sir. Sure. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. And in all things, we are grateful and thankful. But we ask this in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Prayer that gets God's Amen. attention. My brothers and sisters, we all pray. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And I just wonder if we ever feel sometimes that we are praying and God is not hearing our prayers. Well. I, I, I'll be the first to have to confess and admit that there has been times that I feel that and I know that God didn't answer my prayers the way I wanted him to. Amen. Amen. And there's been times that I've prayed and I didn't get the answer to that prayer. Well, Amen. Amen. And I know I'm not the only one. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you a question. Do you sometimes feel that you are just saying words? Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel that you are just throwing these words into the air? That, that God is not listening. That well, God is yeah. not going to hear you and answer your prayer. Amen. Amen. But when I look at the book of Daniel, and as we look at this particular chapter, we can see some things in this book that will help us as we continue this journey with him. Yeah. And I want to show us from this passage in Daniel how we can pray in a way that gets God's attention. Yeah. Anybody interested? Yeah. Well, Daniel, listen, he would show us because the Bible tells this is the first year of Darius. This is after the Medes and the Persians have overtaken uh, Babylon, and now they're ruling. Yeah. And uh, yeah. this is probably 60 to 70 years that Daniel has already been there. Amen. Yeah. He has already been there, yes, uh, in, ba in captivity. Daniel, as a 15-year-old, went to Babylon as a, a prisoner of war, but 
Even though he was in captivity, Daniel was able to prosper in the midst of that bondage. Don't you know, my brothers and sisters, that you know it doesn't matter where you are. If God is going to bless you, God can bless you. You need to not feel that you have to be in a certain place at a certain time and a certain way for God to bless you. The God we serve is able to meet you wherever you are. Amen. Don't feel like you're too far away. It doesn't matter where you are. God is able yeah. to take care of his own. And we learn from yeah. Daniel that God will do that, won't he? Yeah. In the midst of it all, Daniel prospered yeah. in the midst of being in captivity. Yeah. And God would do that for you. Yeah. God would do that for me. But we look now, Daniel, he finds himself concerned because it has been 60 to 70 years now mm -hmm. that they have been in bondage. Yeah. That they've been under the heavy hand of captivity. Oh, yeah. And when he looked around at his people, he realized that they hadn't changed. They were just as messed up as they were when they went there. Yeah. It's amazing, my brothers and sisters, how it is that sometimes God has to whip us and whip us and whip us. And in the midst of it all, we will not give in yeah. and take heed yeah. to his hand. Amen. Amen. So we find... Uh, the house of Judah in this way. And Daniel now, the Bible says that he was reading in the book. He was reading the word of God. And he read there in Jeremiah that it said Judah would be desolate for 70 years. Daniel read that, listen, the first thing you need to understand as it relates to approaching God, the problem we have is that we have gotten our intel from the wrong sources. We have taken in data from the wrong avenues. We're listening to everything but God. But I want to tell you something. You need to listen to the voice of God. If we would listen to God, there are some things that we would learn. We need to open How do we hear God? Listen, don't wait for God to speak to you in a dream and a vision. Don't wait for God to speak to you through an angel, nor through the air. Listen, God speaks to us through his word. And when we look at the word of God, we will come to understand that there are some things that needs to happen that's not happening. Yeah. God shows us what we need to see. God is so good to you, and God is so good to me that he always initiates things for us, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah. Oh, listen, God is the initiator. Yeah. You don't approach God until God approach you. Yeah. Listen, you don't love God first. You love God because God first loved you. Amen. You don't serve God because you don't serve God first. You serve God. Why? Yeah. Because God first served you. How did God serve you? Yeah. He served you by dying on the cross, by sending his son to die on the cross for your sins and mine. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's how he served us. And because of what God has done for us, yeah. then we serve him. Yeah. We love God because he first loved us. We serve God because he served us. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We give to God because God first gave yeah, yeah. to us. Yeah. Have I got a witness here? Yeah. Oh, my brothers and sisters, listen, you need to hear the word of God. We, When we listen to what God says, we will understand, listen, how we ought to pray. Yeah. Sometimes we don't know how to pray. We don't know when to pray. We don't know what to pray. And sometimes we don't even know why to pray. But when we look Look into God's word. We'll come to understand the when, the what, the why, and the how of prayer. Yeah. God shows us in his word how we ought to come to him. Listen, the Bible says this. We have not because we ask not. James 4 and 2 said because we ask amiss. Because we want to consume it of our own lust. Listen, my brothers and sisters. We can come to God, but we got to come to God with a, a seriousness and certainty. Yeah. We've got to come to God knowing that he is a God that will hear and answer prayer. Oh, my brothers and sisters, Jesus said this in John, I think, 15 chapter. He said, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you can ask what you will and it shall be given unto you. Problem is, are we abiding in him? So you can't be walking contrary to the word of God, the will of God, the way of God, and expect God to honor your prayer. You got to say, God, listen, I'm trying to do what you want me to do. I know we're not perfect. We know no one here is perfect, but we should be striving. Yeah. Amen. And you want to know why you don't have, listen, he said this, that's a promise from God. If you abide in me and his word abide in 
you. Amen. 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 Then you can ask what you will. And it will be given unto you. Or you got to read your Bible. You got to listen to what God is saying. When you listen to what God is saying, you'll understand how messed up things are. If you listen to what God, if you listen to what God is saying, you realize how messed up you are. Amen. See, the problem is we want to look at ourselves in light of somebody else. Yeah. We, we can always find somebody that's worse than we are, that's better than we are, uh, that, that's, that's raggedier than we are. You can always find somebody. And see, the problem is that's not the judge. That's not the standard. You got to measure up to the, you got to look at the mirror of God's word. You got to look at the man in the mirror. And that's who you ought to measure up to, not man. But God, God's word, tell us how we are to be. Stop comparing yourself to somebody else and justifying yourself based on somebody else. No, it's you and God. When you stand before God, nobody will stand before God with you but you. Daniel shows us that we get the burning and the desire and the burden not from what we see, not from what we hear, but from what God says. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Bible tells us sir. that when Daniel bowed before God, the Bible says that he turned to the Lord. He focused on God. I want to tell you something. That's what you got to do. You've got to focus your attention on him. Oh, my brothers and sisters, you got to focus on him. Daniel said, I turned to him. What, what, what is Daniel telling us? He said, I sought the Lord. I made up my mind when I saw where I was and what was needed. Yeah. Instead, of, uh, instead of me turning to the world, instead of me turning to someone else, I turned to the Lord and I focused my attention on him. Yeah. All my brothers and sisters, we have too many distractions in this life. There's too many distractions in our way. We need to focus our attention on him. Seek the Lord while he may be found. You got to seek him. Jesus said, if you seek him, you will find him. Amen. Daniel would tell us that when you're feeling overwhelmed and you find yourself in a bad way, and you don't know what to do, first of all, you focus your attention on God. What you got to do, my brothers and sisters, take the attention off yourself and your surroundings and your circumstances and put your attention on God. Hebrews 11 and 6 say, God is a rewarder of those who earnestly, diligently seek him. If you seek him, God will reward you in your seeking. Then you said, I focused my attention to God. I turned my face to the Lord God, seeking him. I gave my attention to the Lord. That's where I turned my attention to. I stopped looking at myself. I stopped favoring and feeling myself. I, I stopped pitying myself, and I started focusing on him. Listen, my brothers and sisters, Daniel would tell us, listen, you've got to, once you focus your attention on God, you've got to express your desires to God. you got to talk to him. He said this, my brothers and sisters, look at what he said, and I began pleading with God earnestly in prayer. What it says in the Message Bible, I poured out my heart, bearing my soul to God. My brothers and sisters, listen to how we pray. Look at how we pray. We pray in such a nonchalant way, in such a haphazard way, a non-concerted way. We don't give any into it. As, the, as Daniel said, I poured out into the Lord. That means I gave it all I had. I poured. It was emotional. I was broken. I sought him with all that I had. I cried out to God. I gave God. I cried out as if God needed, I needed to get God's attention like a baby or a child would when he hurts himself and he cries out to mama or daddy. Daniel's saying, I cried out to the Lord. Listen, I gave it all I have. The problem is, what are we giving him in prayer? Father, I stretch my hand to thee, know the help I know. If thou would draw myself for me, further shall I go. How do we actually pray? Do we just say words? Or do we give God our heart? Oh, yeah. Do we pour out to him like we are really hungry and needy? Do we lay it all bare on the altar of God? 
do we pull on the strings of God's heart to the place where we get his attention? Do I keep on pulling on his a string and it's him yes. until I get his attention, until he hear me, till he answer me. God, I need you. God, I, I need you. Listen, you've got to look up and you've got to speak up. You've got to cry out to God sometimes. The problem is we don't take prayer serious enough. We just want to say a word here and a word there and think that's getting it done. My brothers and sisters, that's not getting it done. You've got to cry out to God. As if you believe in your belief that he is the only one that can help you. Do you really believe that God is the only one that can do it? Then you got to start acting like it. When you pray, you don't have to write down words. You don't have to try to be pretty in your praying. You just got to cry out to God. Some of us want to look good. Some of us want to sound good. Listen, God don't care how you look. God don't care how you sound. You can tune it up. You, you can swoon it up. It doesn't do anything with God. God is concerned with what's on your heart, what's on the inside. Really, what, where are you? You need to be able to talk to God like you would talk to mama, like you would talk to daddy. That's who God is to you. Daniel would tell us and show us how important it is to lay it bare before him. Yes. Because Daniel understood that God was the only one yes, that could help him and do anything for him. For Daniel would show us also, my brothers and sisters, that you've got to be serious and you've got to show your seriousness in prayer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. You've got to show it. How did Daniel show it? I'm glad you asked. The next verse said, then I fasted. You've got to sometimes back away from the table. You've got to sometimes deny yourself the things that you want. You've got to let God know that you're serious about this thing that you're asking for. Yeah. You've got to listen, not only just speak to God, but you've got to show God you mean it. Because I do believe sometimes we just say words. Mm -hmm. But God is not interested in just the words you say. He is, he's really interested in what's in your heart. Yeah. And really, where are you really with God? Are you serious about what you're asking for? Sometimes you ask God for things just because you want to pacify your own feelings and deal with you and, and, and pet your own conscience. But listen, God wants you to be real when you pray to him. And when you ask God for something, something, you've got to go a step beyond prayer and you've got to back away from the table. I know we don't like to talk about fasting because we like to eat, but I want to tell you something. Sometimes you've got to back away from that table. We all like to eat, but I don't like to hurt. Sometimes you got to back away so God can heal your hurt and help your need. Have I got a witness? Jesus Jesus himself said that this some things come by fasting and praying. And listen, you can't just pray all the time. If you're praying and it ain't getting done, then you need to fast. Back away from the table. We don't talk about that too much. But every once in a while, you need to back up and say, God, I'm giving it to you. I need, Lord, you to do something in my life. Lord, I need you to move in a special way. I'm not just asking and, and saying words. I want you to know, God, I really mean this. So I'm backing away. Got to back away prayer and fasting. We like to pray. We like to say words, but we don't put want to put any seriousness with it. Show how sincere we are by that with our fasting. Just ask yourself, when the last time I fasted? Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 But Daniel will show us that some things come by fasting and praying. Jesus said it, didn't he? I, 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 yes he did we see my brothers and sisters that the bible is filled with examples of fasting and prayer yeah. amen the bible shows us that before even Moses went up on the mountain and before Moses received the ten commandments he fasted and prayed yeah, yeah. we find in certain scripture and examples of history that the Israelites before they went into battle they would fast and pray we understand, listen, even before Nehemiah began to build the wall, when he went to Jerusalem and saw that it was in ruin, the Bible says before he approached the king that he spent time fasting and praying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My brothers and sisters, we see examples from history, biblical history, how important fasting is. And if you want to get something from God, if you want to pray in a way that gets God's attention, then sometime you've got to fast and pray. Yeah, yeah. Have I got a witness here? Yeah, yeah. Daniel would show us 
My brothers and sisters, how important it is, even Jesus himself. You remember, don't you, when he went down in the water in the wet journey and came up and God testified that this is my son in whom I am well pleased. The Bible says that Jesus was led into the wilderness to be tempted and for 40 days Jesus fasted and prayed. He fasted and prayed before he began his earthly ministry. I want to tell you something. We just like to go ahead and do things without even asking God for direction, instructions, or permission. But I want to tell you something. I, I know what happens to me, and this is what happens to you. You find yourself in trouble because you went where God didn't send you, and you did what God didn't tell you. You've got to understand, my brothers and sisters, every once in a while, you've got to bow your knee, and then you've got to back away and seek God's face and let God do something in your life because God will speak to you. Daniel would show us. He will show us how important it is as we approach God and if we want to pray in a way that gets God's attention. The Bible shows us as we read that Daniel confessed his sins. And he confessed the sins of his people. Daniel did not try to make excuses for their wrongdoing. Daniel did not try to excuse away their actions and their attitude. Daniel didn't shun his own responsibility because he was a part of the kingdom. And Daniel said, God, we sinned against you. We didn't listen to your word. We didn't do what you said. And because of that, we are where we're supposed to be. Because you told us what would happen if we didn't obey you. Damn. Daniel did not listen, try to make excuses with God. And I want to challenge you to stop making excuses with God for your wrongness, your wrongdoing, your mistakes, your actions, your attitude. You need to stop making excuses, but you need to say, Father, I've sinned against you. It's not my mother, it's not my father, my sister, not my brother, but it's me. Nobody made me do it. As Adam said, that woman that you gave me, the woman said, that serpent, no, God, it's me. I'm responsible for my own wrongdoing. I've sinned against you. I haven't heard your word nor obeyed what you said. And I'm not here, God, because I don't deserve to be here. I realize that I'm supposed to be here. Daniel would let you know that, listen, we've got to be real with God because God knows anyway. <clears throat> You're not faking and fooling anybody but your own self. Because God already knows your heart and he knows the things you do and not only what you do, but he knows why you do them. And God, listen, Daniel shows us and showed us how important it is to be real with God. How can you come? How can you expect God to hear you when you won't be real with God? Listen, you're not perfect. Nobody's perfect, but own up to your own shortcomings. Own up to your own sins, your own actions, and your own nasty attitudes. Nobody made you do it. It's not because of where you were born and whose house you lived in. No, it's not because of your environment. It's because of you. David said, it's me, Lord, I've sinned. I've sinned against you. Nobody else but me, Lord, I've done it. Listen, you've got to, if you want to hear God and you want God to answer your prayer. You don't want to pray in a way that God will answer you, then you've got to come clean with God. Yeah. And you got to confess your sin. Too many of us ask things from God without coming clean with God. Yeah. You've got to come clean with him yeah. because he already knows. Daniel would help you to understand that it's important to come clean with God. Yeah. Yeah. And listen, Daniel was praying to God. And as Daniel was praying, he was talking to God Listen, he poured out his heart to God. Yes, and he understood God's word. Daniel could pray like he prayed because he had spent time in listening to God and reading the word of God. When you listen to the word of God, you can pray right. You can understand that, yes, God knows you're wrong, but God will forgive you your sin. When you know God's word, you'll understand that there are many promises that God makes to you. Some of those are with conditions and some are not with conditions. Yeah, yeah. Daniel could pray because he understood the heart of God. Oh, yeah. Daniel prayed and could come clean, listen, because he knew the promises of God, he knew the word of God. Yeah. Listen, because Daniel knew the word of God, he knew the heart of God. 
And if you read on down, I think the verse number nine, you'll find that Daniel said, Lord, I'm not praying because we don't deserve to be here. Yeah. Lord, I'm not crying out to you because I feel that we've been mistreated and judged unfairly. Yeah. But God, I'm calling out to you and asking you to help me because I know you are a loving father. Yeah. And that you are a merciful God. Oh, yeah. I'm calling out to you because I know that you are God that looks beyond faults and meet needs. Yeah. Have I got a witness here? Daniel would say, listen, I'm praying to you, God, because I understand that your heart is a loving heart and you are a loving, merciful Father. And I'm calling on you because I'm asking now for you to give me mercy. Ain't God all right? Well, the God we serve is a merciful God. Have I got a witness here? Because the truth of the the matter is this none of us sitting here deserve the blessings of God none of us standing here has earned the benefit of God but God is a faithful God my God is faithful even when I'm unfaithful never got a witness here somebody needs to know that God will answer your prayer. You can be wrong. Just confess your wrong and God will feel forgive you of your sin. I heard, I heard the Bible saying that all have sinned and come short of the glory. But if you confess your sin, he is faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. What God says, just come clean to me and I'll make a way for you. Ain't he all right? He, Daniel, prayed and God answered his prayer. The Bible says that an angel came to him and said, God answered you when you first began to pray but here I am with the word from God God told me to tell you that he loved you God told me to tell you that he's a merciful God and God is gonna honor his word tell somebody that God is the God that loves us God is a merciful father God is a, a forgiving God. God is a, a prayer hearing God and a prayer answering God. I heard, I heard the angel said to Daniel, God will do what he said he would do. He's faithful to his word. Ain't he all right? Well, what do I need to do in order to say and pray in a way that gets God's attention? Number one, I got to make sure I know his word. I got to listen to the word of God. His word is a lamp unto my feet. His word is a light to my path. His word is strength to my weakness to my helplessness, uh, healing to my hurt, uh, his word, I said his word, uh, Daniel said, uh, I know God's word, uh, and I cried out, uh, but I'm telling somebody, uh, you got to focus uh, your attention on God, uh, I know you're hurting, uh, I know you might be empty, uh, but focus uh, your attention on God, uh, and cry out uh, to him, yeah. Yes, in all earnestness until you get his attention. God wants you to confess your sin because he's faithful to forgive you. You can only walk clean when you confess your sin. Ain't he all right? And 
after you confess your sin, uh, he'll forgive you and clean you up. Uh, never got a witness here. Won't he do just what he said? Uh, well, I'm closing now, uh, but this is what you got to do. Um, give God praise. Uh, the Bible says uh, keep forgetting to praise God uh, and thank God uh, for what he was doing uh, and who he was. Uh, you ought to give him praise. Uh, don't you dare wait uh, until the battle is over. Uh, you can give him praise uh, right here, right now. Uh, he's worthy. I said he's worthy. Uh, he's worthy. I said he's worthy uh, when I think uh, of the goodness of Jesus uh, and all uh, he's done for me. Uh, my soul cries out to him. Uh, ain't he all right? Uh, goodbye, y'all. God bless your heart. Uh, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. I heard, I heard. Will say uh, to we that are the people of God, uh, if my people, which are called by my name, uh, will humble themselves uh, and pray, uh, seek my face, uh, turn from their wicked ways, uh, then I hear from heaven uh, and hear their land. Uh, somebody uh, needs some healing uh, right now. Uh, situation. Cry loud unto him. He'll do what he said he would do. Won't he do it? Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. How do I know that God will do it? I tried him. I said I tried him. I tried him. I said I tried him, I tried him, I said I tried him, I tried him, I said I tried him, did you try him, won't he do it, won't he do it, won't he do it. Father we thank you, bless your name, glory to your name, what a mighty God you are. We thank you, Father, that Daniel showed us how to pray in a way that gets your attention. I thank you for the example. Help us, oh God, to follow these principles and this pattern so we too can get our prayers answered and get your attention. We thank you and we praise you. For it's in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Come on.